Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to another episode in our Endless Runner tutorial series where we're taking a look at how to make some platforms appear ahead of us. And today we're going to take a look at how to make them disappear behind us as well. So, what we did last episode was basically lay out how the platforms just will automatically be generated ahead of the player. So, if we run along here, if we watch our little scene here, we can see that the platforms are just being created over and over and over again. Which is, which is good, that's exactly what we want, but we don't want to be creating a whole lot of platforms that are just going to live here forever in our game and take up a whole bunch of memory. So we want to make sure we can get rid of objects behind the player. And we're going to do this pretty similarly to how we did the platform generation ahead of the player. So on our main camera, we had a point just ahead of us, which is just off the screen of the camera. So our camera box is like there and our generation point is a little bit further ahead so it's just far enough ahead for the platforms to be generated before the player can reach that point so what we're going to do uh, similar to that is we're going to have a point behind the camera here and when the platform any of these platforms gets to that point it goes okay we're now be I'm I'm now behind this point here so I'm going to just destroy myself and disappear so we're going to add an extra point on here we're going to create an empty and we call this platform platform destruction point just like that and then what we're going to do is add a new script so we go into our scripts folder create a new c sharp script and we're going to call this one uh, platform platform destroyer so much like we had platform generator oh I added an extra little hash at the end of that that's not good for anybody so I'm just going to delete this and re make a new one uh, here we go if it will catch up with me sometimes it's a little bit slow this computer platform destroyer and this time I managed just to press enter properly this time uh, so yeah so we're going to open this up in mono develop Give it a second here. Come on, open up for me. Uh, and this is uh, this is going to be a super super straightforward script. So this script is going to be attached to each platform itself. Um, so if we go to our platform, no platform destroyer here, uh, we're going to need to look at that point that we just created, the pu the platform destruction point. So we're going to need uh, something to reference that. So we're just going to say public game object. Um, this we'll, we'll call it the same thing platform destruction point uh, so that's the that's the only variable we're going to use here that's the only thing we're going to need because we're just going to determine when that point is behind uh, the platform that the script is attached to so in our start function we need to know rather than having to go and hook up uh, drag this destruction point into every platform uh, what we're going to do is on our, when it starts here we're going to say platform destruction point is equal to game object dot find platform destruction point so platform destruction point there that's the exact name that we've given this object here and we need to make sure we use the exact name for what we've got here um, so we'll do close that quote and close that bracket. So what game object find does is it'll just say, okay, so our platform destruction point is currently empty. We need to fill it with something. So we go, we're looking for a game object and we want to find that. And then what it does in here is say, find any object that has the name platform destruction point. Uh, so then straight away when the script starts we'll have found that point so then from that from that stage onwards we can do a simple little if statement here which will just say if transform dot position dot x so if the x position of this platform is less than platform destruction point dot transform dot position position dot x so that's so what we're saying is if the x position of our, our little of this platform here is less than the transform 
the platform destruction points exposition and as we know that will be slowly moving along like this so as that moves and once it gets to like here the platform will say okay now I'm behind that uh, point so now I'm just going to destroy uh, and to make it do that we're going to put some curly brackets here and basically the only we only need one line here in the middle of this loop or this statement uh, which is destroy game object so just like that that's all that's all you need and what that'll do is it'll destroy whatever object that the script is attached to so we're going to save that pop back into unity um, and this is going to create a little issue for us first but we're going to have uh, a nice simple solution for that as well so we'll go to our platforms and on both of these guys we need to give both of them the same script because we don't want any platforms being left behind so there we go our platform destroyer pop that in there and we don't need to do anything with this this little thing here so now if we hit play I'm gonna actually pause it first so if we hit play and once it gets rolling oh well we can see <laughs> something has happened that I wasn't expecting uh, immediately our first platform has automatically destroyed and that's because I didn't move the platform destruction point so we're gonna undo this so our platform destruction point it's a child of the camera so it'll move along with the camera but we didn't move it from its starting position of being right in the middle and we want to move it well behind the range of the camera so if we look at our camera we can see that the left edge of it is roughly there and we want to move it well behind that so probably around here somewhere so just around this general box so we'll pull this back to there switch back to the camera we can see the point is well behind that so now we can be sure that any platforms won't be destroyed until they get to that point so if we hit play now and we'll actually remember to pause it this time again the player gets going oh no he's falling down let me just drag the player back up here so as we can see um Actually, the player doesn't really matter too much. We don't need to worry about him. Uh, as we see, our platforms have been generated ahead of us. And our, our first platform back here, this guy, where is he? This, this guy here. He's still there. He's perfectly fine because our platform destruction point is all the way back there. And if we just tap it onwards a little bit like this. Oh, there we go. Our first platform has now been destroyed. Now, this is where we introduce a problem. Because in our platform generator script... We were using that first platform to, to copy and make all the other ones. And now that that first platform has been deleted, now we've got a missing game object here. So as we go forward now, if we go to our generation point, we can see it's just here. But once it gets past that, once it gets to about there, it should be creating another platform. But now we see we've got this error down here because there's no object for it to know how to create. So if we just let it play on, our platforms would be destroyed behind us and we've got no more platforms being created so obviously that's not what we want to do and um, one way we could handle this would be to for example take this first platform and we'll make a duplicate of it and we'll leave the duplicate there and we'll grab this guy and make it a child of the main camera and then we're going to drag it up so it's not in the scene anymore and now that it's a child of the main camera it'll move along with us so if we use our platform generator it would we still have that platform there if we hit play here once it starts going again we'll see that like scripts or, or platforms are being created ahead of us that's perfect platforms are destroying behind us again that's good as well and we have this one little platform traveling along with us um being uh, being used as a reference for uh, the script to create which is fine that's one way of doing it but what if you have a bunch of different platforms that are using and we're going to create systems in a few episodes time to be able to use a whole load of different platforms and to randomly decide which platforms you're going to be jumping towards and um, so if you have a whole load of them if you have say for some crazy reason you've got like 20 or 30 different kinds of platforms you don't want those objects taking up space and like floating along with the camera and everything like that so that's no use to us so what we'll use instead is uh, something that's built into unity and very handy which is prefabs so in our assets folder here we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this folder prefabs 
just so it's handy to remember. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter or anything. Uh, and basically all we're going to do is grab this first platform and just drag it into there like that. So that what this does, it creates a prefab of the object. And if we can manage to go back to the start here, basically a prefab of the object is just a copy of the object and you can drag it back into here and just create as many copies as you possibly want and it automatically creates them. So now that we have a prefab, we can delete that we, and we can delete that one there. And now our platform generator has no, has no game object in it. So we can just use our prefab, drag that in there like that. And now if we hit play, what we'll have is the game will basically pull that object from prefabs and create it every single time. So as you can see, it's still creating nice objects for us, but we're not being having to carry extra objects along with us or anything like that. So it's a little bit more, a little bit more sensible, a little bit better way to handle it. Um, okay, so that's basically how we can handle destroying the platforms behind us uh, and in a pretty simple way. So now we, we're only kind of at maximum have maybe four or five platforms ahead of us or being used at any one time. But we're going to start looking now at how to add some randomness into the game. At the moment, all our platforms have the exact same distance between them every single time. And that's kind of a bit boring. So we're going to look at randomizing other platforms and stuff, like I said. But first, we're going to take a straightforward look at just randomizing the distance between each platform. So a super really easy way to do that is back in our script for our platform generator. If we open that back up in Mono Develop, we see here we have our private float for our platform width, and that's what we're deciding is showing how, how much gap is between each one. That's fine, but we don't want to just have a set gap. So we're going to create two new private floats. Private float, uh, platform, platform with, oh, with, not what, <laughs> platform with min and private float, platform with max. And so basically what we're going to do is we're still going to use our platform width added on to our, oh not platform width, oh sorry this shouldn't be platform, this should be distance between. Oh I'm thinking of the wrong things altogether, sorry. This should be distance, distance between min and distance between max. So it's our platform, it's our platform width is deciding how wide the platform is, our distance between is what's deciding how much gap there is. Uh, between each platform. I was being, uh, I was confusing myself a little bit there. Uh, so yeah, so we're still going to use our distance between added onto our platform width, added onto our current position to move the next platform along, but we need to de define what our distance between is. So in this if statement where we're generating a new platform, basically what we're going to say here is uh, distance, oh, distance between is equal to random dot range and ran what random dot range does is basically you have if you have two numbers it will pick any random number in between those two numbers so basically what we're going to do is we've got our distance between min and a distance between max and we're just going to put them in here so distance between min say distance between minimum is one and our max gap will be five so it'll pick any number between zero, between one and five, basically. So distance between max there, and we'll just end that line with a semicolon. So now it now we've defined a new value for our distance between, and it'll be carried into our position being added on. So we're just going to save that, pop back in here, and we're going to add those new uh, values into our platform generator. So now we've, we previously have put our tr tree into distance between here, but that's not going to matter now. That's going to not going to have any effect. Uh, why is it not? Oh, I don't know why I said those to private. <laughs> they should be public so we can actually do something with them. That was a, a, a silly little mistake. Um, obviously, if you have a private float, you're not able to enter any numbers for it. So they'll just be zero forever and all our platforms will be stuck 
right beside each other. Uh, but what I was saying, yeah, so our distance between value that we've already given here won't have any effect now at all. We could set that to 5 million or, so, or however many zeros that is, I don't know. Um, so our distance between minimum we set to 1 and our maximum will be 5. Actually, just to make it a little more obvious, our player won't possibly be able to cover this distance of 20. Uh, actually, let's give him a little bit of an extra ability to jump and see if he can be able to make any big gaps. But yes, so you should be able to see a variance in the distance between these platforms now. So if we press play, the first one will still be there just like that. But oh, look, there you can see already that we're getting huge gaps, tiny gaps and middling gaps. It just it just adds a little bit more of a adventure to the game. Let's try run it again and hopefully this time I'll get the player going before he falls down to his doom. Well, that's a big jump. Oh, not quite big enough. But yes, as you can see, so the idea then is to kind of fiddle around with this until it makes, until you get a feeling. Like I said, the distance between obviously didn't have any effect at all. Once the game starts running, that number gets changed automatically. Uh, I just failed terribly at moving the player down there. Let's try one more time. Whoa! Oh! 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 I barely caught the sight of a platform and that allowed me to jump an extra time. But there you go. That's how you can add just a little bit of random into your game. And next time out we're going to take a look at adding some more random uh, abilities into the game itself. So thanks for watching everybody and I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.